Keepers. We're the Earth Keepers. <laughs> My name is Ryan Conway. I'm Andrea And we are also the owners, proud owners of Fable Farms, Indiana, which is the home of the Earth Keepers. About a common confusion is that somehow we have three names. So Green Camino was the name of the collection business when it started. And we are in a brand transition to Earth Keepers. And then Fable Farms is our farm home that is also our item registered composting place. So people can find out about our compost making activities through like the Solid Waste District and Fable Farms is like the listing for that. But then they've also seen our yard signs around town and the county for Green Camino compost. But they've also heard about and maybe even seen the movie for Earth Keepers compost. Yet somehow, Earth Keepers, Green Camino, and Fable Farms are all, all us. the same family. So yeah, we have a lot going on at the farm right now. We like to just call it like our full compact farm. Uh, we have everything from the compost being made in the back to a small field of row crops to about 175 chickens and chickaroos. <laughs> Uh, we got the high tunnel that we're currently uh, kind of renovating, and then we got some beans and squash growing in the front. So and the orchard. We, we have an orchard in the middle between the, the, the field crops and the compost, so we feel blessed like we have it all, and we're just doing our best to steward the land. And so we moved in here in April 15th of 2017. So we are just in our, somehow we've, we've only been here three years, but now it feels like our entire life. And we've, we've evolved away from our old life so much that this is our new life and we love it. And uh, it's very much our home at last. Yeah, I'd say community organizers and academics. I mean, we both came here for school. Yeah, I came here to do my PhD in neuroscience. And I came here to do a PhD in political science but we just kind of fell in love with the Monroe County community and just, it had things that we had both always wanted in a community, vibrant, kind people who were always pushing to make it a better place for everybody. And, um, and it was really easy to just get integrated and start working immediately. And so it's been, it's been great. And, and, and really soon after we started working with different groups, we were just really well networked right? because Bloomington has that thing to it that it's big enough but small enough where you can get to know the main players and, and, and really fast start branching out your networks. And so Sandy, we were just like, we knew everyone and we just felt really at home. No, this is all very much an adventure. Oh. So I had some experience uh, gardening and growing food plants growing up and she had had some experience with animals and horses uh, growing up. But for us, it, this was really like more of like a dream and a set of values that we believed in and could get behind. And so Andrea led the Center for Sustainable Living for like five years. And at the same time, I was leading the Bloomington Food Policy Council for about five years. And so growing our own food and building community around that and transforming waste into resources were things that we had been talking about for like half a decade, but we just never had the opportunity to like really go do it ourselves. Like we, we would garden at our apartment complex. Uh, the superintendent there was very nice. Um, when we had a house, uh, we invited a permaculture class to come do their projects there and work with us. Uh, so we were growing food on site in the neighborhood. We always composted. We always, even when we had our one bedroom, like a studio apartment, we had a little warm, warm bin. bin under our sink. And so we were like really into composting. In fact, we tried to get the whole apartment complex to compost and we went knocking door to door to see if we would all like get into uh, buying one of these tumblers so that we could share it. And we, we made a proposal of these are the different composting methods and what can we do. I mean, to me, honestly, I'm really fired up about it. And it might sound strange to some people, but I'm fired up about it because it seems magical and miraculous. And it's always a story of a comeback and a turnaround. You know, compost is this thing that is all about like hope and transformation, like almost just like the story of a seed. You don't know what's gonna come out of this, but you put in the time and the attention and the love. And, and in that, time, attention, and love, over time, 
you know, it, it transforms, you know, this waste into this rich, beautiful, restorative resource. And to, and to me, I mean, I, I can't imagine many more miraculous and magical things than that. Uh, you know, taking something that was, I mean, the stuff that turns into the black gold is always like the stinkiest, nastiest, like you don't even want that in your garbage can, get that away from my house kind of stuff. <laughs> but when we take that from people and provide that service and then we cook it essentially here, uh, that, that transformation process is just beautiful to me. And I think that I love compost is that it combines my science side with, with art, right? Because science, you can't say that it's 100% science. You can't calculate every single thing in, in composting. You know, it's not an exact thing where you have a precise recipe that you follow. And then the whole biology of it at another level is just, it's amazing. It's, it's I mean, I, I almost wish I had been a soil scientist instead of a neuroscientist. When I started doing that, I was like super into it. I was actually considering changing careers, you know? <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I love that about it. It's, it's, as Ryan was saying, it's a really, it's a compact farm and we have a little bit of everything, but in some ways it does all revolve around this compost system. We're just going to do the composting and we were going to partner with other people who were going to be doing the collection. And eventually that evolved into us doing the collection also. And honestly, that is, that is great because we, we do everything. It saves us in costs. It creates and efficiencies and it also drives up the quality because we can do quality control from the point of collection to the point of sale. So as, as we've been learning more and more how to more efficiently run the business, we settled into this model where we actually have two businesses. One business is the compost selling and then the other business is the hauling and pickup of organic waste. So these are two different businesses that obviously collaborate the compost goes, uh, we do keep some of it for ourselves, as was the original, uh, the, the story of that for us. Uh, but no, we've also been selling to uh, other local farmers and gardeners. We, we can't even meet the, the demand. Every week we get at least two, three people asking, do you have compost? And, and we actually we have a batch right now that's not ready, unfortunately. So I've, I've already kind of like memorized my response to that email, like, sorry, we have a batch that's being prepared, <laughs> check in later. Um, and also, you know, as the increase, people have been gardening more at home, and so there's there's big, big demand. Almost a year, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a long process for us. And one of the things that um, we we don't rush it. You know, that's 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 a big thing for us. We just we don't rush it, and um, so I think that also makes the product better there at its time and here as well. And we are extremely concerned about uh, weeds and invasive species. And so if we feel like the, the pile needs to get hot again, we, we just let it get hot. You know, we, we just do not. We've heard these horrifying stories of people buying compost and it came with like, I don't know, morning glory and their entire high tunnel had to be, they had to pull out all the soil and we do it. And so that's, we just do not, we've dealt ourselves with some invasives that were already in the property. We do not wish that for anyone. So. So we're extra paranoid about it, but I think it's, it's also, it's a good thing. At the beginning, it, everything was very anxiety producing, right? Because we had like, we, we came in here like so used to just, we're doers, right? And we're like, oh, in one year we're gonna be growing crops. We're gonna have gigantic compost piles. And no, and, and people kept telling us like, it takes you at least three years to like know your land. And we're like- We didn't want to believe that. <laughs> and yeah. Like, and, and we'll clearly, get it in three months. Yeah, and clearly it took us a long time to get to know our land and really understand the cycles. And and this, this is the first year that we actually feel like we've been we knew what we were getting into as spring was coming and we, we were, were on ready. time we were starting our seeds for the very first time we were on time you know and so so now instead of feeling this list of things that we have to do as an anxiety like it's more like it's more i enjoy everything that we're doing and i can now look back and see what the, the, the fruits of all this work is and, and just i love it my favorite part of the farm honestly is having my family here and being able to have friends out. I mean, getting the farm, we were able to essentially, you know, we, we were like, okay, we're making this our home. We would love for this to be like a, a project of love 
So we sent out the call to her family, my family, everyone's welcome. And sure enough, her mom bought the lot that's right behind my parents' lot, which is right next door. So that now both sets of parents are thoroughly integrated into the farm. So just having, you know, my folks and my brother living here, her mom having a lot here and planning on getting here, like it makes it just so deeply satisfying for this to be this restorative place for not just us, but our loved ones. And it binds the past to the present and the future in a really beautiful way. And it's kind of transformative for all of us because, you know, we've all, I think, wanted to have more access to and life on the land. And this was our first, you know, experience and chance to do so even as a family. So being able to have the family here is certainly, for me, uh, uh, my, my favorite part uh, because it just grows and expands the dream uh, and the vision of this to touch so many more people. Um, I, mean, I think I guess the goal is to be as self-sustaining as possible. You know? I mean, and how also, I mean, a big thing for us too has always been like, how can we be restorative as people in our community and as stewards of this land? Like, you know, all I, I personally feel like all peoples and all lands in these days are in need of restoration, redemption, rejuvenation, and how we can each do our part to be a part of that, I think is important. And so for me, a like lifetime project for the farm is how full of life can we make this? How much beauty and food and, and, and good experiences and nutrition can we bring forth from this land? It's not just important, you know, for the earth and for us, but it's important for us as people to have that kind of healing impact on, on the world we live in. And it also models it for other people and shows them that it's accessible, it's possible, you know people who are doing it, you can be a part of it too. And let's all have the conversation and get each other fired up about doing this in our own lives, whether it's, you know, urban agriculture, uh, good land management, you know, at, at your county home, or, or starting some kind of a food or a farm project. But honestly, for now, for the next five years, we still got plenty of work cut out for us here just to make this uh, manageable and, and have all the different parts and infrastructure and comforts and conveniences and bells and whistles that we'd like to have for us and the fam. So.